Okay, in this video we're going to look at a solution to problem number B1 from the 2014 Putnam exam. So let's look at the statement. So a base 10 over expansion of a natural number n is a sum given by dk times 10 to the k plus dk minus 1 times 10 to the k minus 1 all the way down to d0 times 10 to the 0 where dk is not equal to 0, so that highest term is not equal to 0, and all of these di's run from uh, 0 up to 10. So notice if we had stopped at 9 here, that would have been a normal base 10 um, expansion, not an over expansion. In other words, that's just uh, the way of looking at a number with a tens place and a hundreds place and a thousands place and so on and so forth. But this is a bit of a play on that where we allow 10 in one of those place values. And the question we want to answer here is when does n have a unique over expansion? And so let's like look at some examples when it does not have a unique over expansion first. And notice that 10 can be written in two ways. So it can be written as 10 times 10 to the 0. So that is not allowed as a standard base 10 expansion, but it is allowed as one of these over expansions. And then another way we could write it would be 1 times 10 to the 1 plus 0 times 10 to the 0. So that would be your standard base 10 expansion. So now let's look at another one, maybe uh, 2057. <clears throat> and so notice the standard base 10 expansion of this would be 2 times 10 cubed plus uh, 0 times 10 squared plus 5 times 10 plus 7 times 10 to the 0. Okay, great. But now notice we can change that to a base 10 over expansion of this same number by taking one of these uh, places in the thousands place and moving it down to ten hundreds places. So in other words, we can write this as 1 10 uh, cubed plus 10 times 10 squared plus 5 times 10 to the first plus 7 times 10 to the zero. So we can move into this zero spot right here. And so now, um, looking at these two examples, it looks like the thing that's allowing us to have more than one base 10 over expansion is this zero as part of um, the standard way of writing the number, and that's exactly the case. And it turns out if you do not have a zero there, it's impossible to have anything but a unique base 10 over expansion, and that would be the standard base 10 expansion. And so uh, I'll clean up the board and then we'll look at the proof of that claim. Okay, so here's our claim which will solve this problem. So we're going to claim that n has a unique base 10 over expansion if and only if its normal base 10 expansion has no zeros. And so uh, we're going to do this forward direction first, but we're going to do this forward direction using the contrapositive, and this is actually going to be motivated by these examples that we just looked at. So here, I'll just note here that we're going to do this by the contrapositive. So in other words, let's suppose the normal base 10 expansion has a zero. So suppose the base 10 expansion of n has a zero. So let's suppose we can write n as follows. So dk times 10 to the k, where this dk is not equal to zero, so it's the highest um, place value of this uh, number n, and then we're going to take this all the way down to di plus 1, 10 to the i plus 1, plus our 0 spot, so this is 0 times 10 to the i. So remember, that's the assumption we're making, is that n has a 0 in its normal base 10 expansion, and that's the 0. And now we're going to take this all the way down to z d0 times 10 to the 0. Okay. Great, and so the other thing we're going to assume is the following with di plus 1 not equal to 0 and di plus 1 in the set, um, let's see, 1, 2, up to 9. Okay, so how can we assume that it's not equal to 0? Well, what we'd want to do is start at the left here 
and work to the right and find the first zero that's in the normal base 10 expansion. And so we can always do that, that's easy. So now what we'll do is notice that since we want an over expansion in this case, we can take one number from this di plus one and move it over here into this zero. So we'll have dk 10 to the k plus, here we have di plus one minus one times 10 to the i plus one plus 10 times 10 to the i plus all the way down to d zero times 10 to the zero. So in other words, we have one, two base 10 over expansions of the number n. So this one, which is the standard base 10 expansion with a zero in it, and then this one that we were able to construct because we had the zero. Okay, good. So that proves this forward direction of this claim. So I'll clean up the board and then we'll prove the reverse direction. Okay, so now we're gonna prove the reverse direction and we're gonna do, do that by induction on the number of digits of n. So induction on number of digits of n. And I'll just say our base case, which is n equals one, two, up to nine is clear. We don't really have to do anything for that. Um, it's clear that there is not more than one base 10 over expansion of this, um, of these cases because all you have is a ones place. And so there's nowhere to move lower than a ones place to use that number 10. So our induction hypothesis will be as follows. So we'll suppose for k bigger than or equal to zero and um, n hat uh, with no zeros in normal base 10 expansion then when we expand this as dk hat 10 to the k all the way down to d zero hat 10 to the zero, we have, let's see, so we have all of these di hats, and now they come from one, two, up to nine, and how do we know, know they don't include zero? Well, they don't include zero because there are no zeros in the normal base 10 expansion, and how do we know that they, they do not include 10? Well, that's because the normal base 10 ex expansion is the unique base 10 over expansion by our induction hypothesis. So here we'll say these are unique. Okay, good. And now the next thing that we want to do is set um, n equal to some number that is um, on the order of 10 to the k plus one instead of 10 to the k, so we're using induction here, and so we'll write this as follows, so let's write this as dk plus one, 10 to the k plus one, plus all the way down to d zero. So that's one way that we'll write it, and the other way we'll write it is as dk plus one prime, 10 to the k plus one, all the way down to d zero prime. So in other words, we have two base 10 over expansions for our new number n, which is one step in digits higher than our number n hat that we used for the induction hypothesis. Now, what we'll notice is the following. So notice that if we look at um, n is congruent to d0 and it's congruent to d1 mod 10. Great. And now what that tells us is that D0 has to equal D1. And now there's actually a little bit of work here, and so why is that the case? Because D0 and D1 could be congruent to one, or sorry, congruent to each other mod 10 if one was 10 and one was zero, but we know that one is not zero because we know that the normal base 10 expansion of n does not include any zeros. So let's notice here there are uh, no zeros in the, the di or the di hat are never zero. 
which means these have to be equal to each other because that's the only way that they could be unequal but congruent mod 10. Okay, so now from here what I'm gonna do is clean up the board because we're running out of room and then we'll finish off this solution. Okay, so let's see where we are so far. So we have two over expansions of n, and so we have dk plus one, 10 to the k plus one, all the way down to d zero. Then we have dk plus one prime, 10 to the k plus one, all the way down to d zero prime. And previously, we argued that d zero was equal to d zero prime by looking mod 10. And so the next thing that we wanna do is consider the following. So let's consider um, n minus uh, d0 over 10. Okay, good. So now on the one hand, that's going to be dk plus 1, 10 to the k plus 1, all the way down to d1. But then on the other hand, that's going to be um, d prime k plus 1, 10 to the k, sorry, this should be 10 to the k, not 10 to the k plus one, 10 to the k, all the way down to d1. And again, recall that we know that um, d0 is equal to d0 prime. So notice we've got dk plus one prime, 10 to the k plus, 10 to the k plus, all the way down to d1 prime is the same thing as dk plus one, 10 to the k, all the way down to d1, but then by, the induction hypothesis, since this is in the degree that is lower than the one that we're looking at right now, we know that d1 equals d1 prime all the way up to dk plus 1 equals dk plus 1 prime, which finishes the argument. In other words, both of those over expansions of the number n were equal. Okay, that's the end of this video.